Hi, I'm Laurie and I'm an educational psychologist and I'm going to take you through the next area of development, which is cognitive development. Cognitive development is the process which allows us to acquire, organise and learn to use knowledge. It includes the process of memory, problem solving, reasoning and executive function. Because it's such a huge area, we aren't able to explore all of these elements and so we're going to focus on executive function. Executive function and self-regulation are the skills which enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions and juggle multiple tasks. These skills are crucial to our functioning in the world. So executive function is actually made up of three different types of brain function. The first of these is working memory. So working memory is the capacity to hold and manipulate information in our heads for a short period of time. It's what allows us to follow multi-step instructions or to do mental arithmetic. It's also what allows us to find our place again if we've been interrupted whilst we're reading. And it also allows us to be able to remember and connect up information from one paragraph to the next. The next function is self-control or inhibitory control. This is a skill that's used to master and filter out thoughts and impulses so that we can resist temptations, distractions and habits and allows us to pause and think before we act. It prevents us from shouting out in class or saying something mean in the heat of an argument. It allows us to take turns and to ignore distractions and stay on task. Mental flexibility is the capacity to switch gears and adjust to changing demands, priorities and perspectives. It enables us to apply different rules in different settings, like knowing that the way we play in the playground is very different to how we behave in the classroom. It allows us to catch mistakes and fix them. It also allows us to approach a science experiment in different ways until we get it to work or to try out different strategies when we are working out a conflict with another person. We aren't just born with executive function skills. We develop these over time. And what we can see from looking at the graph is that there's a rapid growth in these skills up to about the age of five and six. So by the time children arrive in school, we would expect that they would have quite a lot of these executive function skills. But as you can see, there's still quite a lot of development to happen. And actually, when children get to adolescence, there's another rapid growth in these skills as, as development happens in the brain. So we know that in the first five years of life, there's a rapid growth in connections in the prefrontal cortex, which is this part of your brain. But we also know that when children come into adolescence, um, we begin to kind of prune away the connections in the brain that we don't use so frequently. And so the skills that we use frequently are the ones that become stronger. So if children have good executive skills going into adolescence, then they're more likely to keep those skills and for them to become more efficient and effective. So the way that these skills develop is through children's experiences. So we know that children who um, live in households or who go to school and have interactions with adults that are attuned interactions. So working with adults who are really tuned into the children's needs and are really responsive to them can really help to develop these skills. But it's also really important that they experience an environment that's predictable and got that structure and routine and also adults modelling the use of executive function skills to help them to develop those skills for themselves. So our role is really, really important. The other thing that we know about executive function is that if children experience significant levels of stress on an ongoing basis, then that can impact on their development of executive function skills. So it's helpful if we can help reduce stresses in our children's life and support them in a, in a really responsive way. We also know, though, that children who have really strong executive function skills actually handle stress much better. So these skills are really, really important. So for most of our children, what we see on the graph there would be the trajectory of the growth of their executive function skills. But we also know for lots of our children who have neurodevelopmental conditions, these skills don't come so easily. So they might need a bit more support with developing these skills or far more explicit teaching of those skills rather than just learning them through the experiences that they have in their day to day life. So now I'd like to do a little bit of an activity. So in a second, I'm going to get you to pause the video. And what I want you to do 
is to have a really good think about your usual morning routine on a weekday. So write down three key tasks that you would normally do on a weekday morning. So for most of us, that would be getting ready for work and getting our children ready for school. So just thinking about three key tasks. So just pause the video for a second and have a think. OK, so now I want you to stop and think about what skills are required to carry out those tasks within your household. So what are the things that you're doing on a day to day basis and what skills do you use in order to carry those tasks out? And now I want you to think about whether any of those tasks don't involve any of those executive function skills that we've spoken about. So as you go about your day to day um, morning routine, so probably getting your kids up and um, organising breakfast, making sure everyone's got all of the things that they need in order to go to school. Are there any of those tasks that don't involve executive function skills? So I would hope that the answer to that question is no, because what we know is that a busy morning and in any normal household, particularly with children, we've got lots of things going on that mean that we've got to try and focus our attention on one thing or maybe switch our attention from one task to another, particularly if you've got children who are maybe interrupting you to ask questions whilst you're in the middle of doing something. It might be that you've got to try and remember which cereal each of your children want and which bowl each of them prefers. And then you've got to hold that information in your mind whilst you get the, re the breakfast ready. So you're using that working memory for those kinds of tasks. We're having to filter out all sorts of distractions whilst we're getting ready in the morning and try to remember all of the key things that we're supposed to be doing. So the chances are that you're unlikely to be able to get ready in the morning without using those executive function skills. So it's really, really important that we help our children to develop those skills, but also really important that we recognise that, especially before they're, they're age five, they don't really have those skills. So they might need a little bit more help and a little bit more assistance with those things in order to be able to carry out day to day tasks. So now we're going to have a think about what sorts of things you might see if your child or a child in your classroom is having difficulties with executive function. So the sorts of things that we might be looking for is a child that has difficulties with changes in routine. So that might suggest that they've got a bit of a lack of mental flexibility and they can't move away from the things that they are used to doing and that have become the routine for them. You might find that children are struggling to do their homework and that could be for lots of different reasons. It might be that they're not managing to hold the instructions in their mind whilst they write them down. It might be that the task itself has got too many steps and they're not able to hold that information in mind. They might have difficulty with multi-step instructions or activities. So if you're asking a child to do something and they're not doing what you're asking them to do, it might be that there's too many stages to that and they can't hold all of that information in their mind whilst they carry out the task. We might see impulsive behaviours. So this might be a child that interrupts constantly. Um, it might be a child that um, can't control themselves and has to go and get something straight away. So a child that maybe goes and sneaks a biscuit from the cupboard because they just can't wait, even though they know that they're not allowed to go and do that. It might be children who act in a way and maybe lash out another child without really thinking before they, they act. We might also find children rushing through tasks and not stopping and planning and thinking about the different steps that they need to do and just diving straight into something without giving it too much thought. We might find children are, are engaging in off task behaviour. So they're maybe not doing what we've asked them to do. They might be distracting others. They might be playing with toys in their bedroom when they're supposed to be doing something. And that might just be because they haven't really remembered what it is they're supposed to be doing. They haven't been able to hold that information in their mind. Or it might just be that they haven't got that impulse control. So they're, they're really easily distracted by other things in the environment. They might be slow getting organised or getting changed for activities. So if you find that your child is just not doing what you're asking them to do and they're taking a really long time to get themselves sorted out, it might be that they haven't got those executive function skills that allow them to be able to follow that task through. And the other thing that we might see is children who have got intense or focused interests. So your child might be completely obsessed with one particular TV programme or it might be that they've got particular toys or a particular type of toy that they want to play with all the time and they can't switch their thinking and be flexible about what they play with. 
It might also be an intense interest in one particular friendship. So sometimes we find that children have a really obsessive interest in one particular friendship and they find it really difficult to be friends with lots of different people at the same time. So now we know that executive function impacts on all sorts of different things and different ways that we function within the world. So we know that executive function is crucial for organisation, it's helpful for problem solving, it allows us to be flexible in our thoughts and behaviours, and it also allows us to control inappropriate impulses. And it allows us to be able to control our attention so that we can put our attention to the right things, we can sustain attention, or we can switch attention if we need to. So if we have difficulties with executive function, it impacts on all of these things and it might result in the behaviours that we've just spoken about. There are lots of different ways that we can support children who have difficulties with executive function. And there are things that we can do at home and things that we can do in the classroom that make life a little bit easier for children with these types of difficulties. So the first thing that we could do is to chunk the information that we're giving to children and present it to them in smaller pieces. So if we have a really long instruction or we have an activity that's got lots of different steps to it, it can be really helpful to give the child the information in one or two steps at a time, one or two bits of information at a time, so they don't have to hold too much in their mind whilst carrying out the task. And then once they've done those pieces, we can give them a little bit more information and a bit more of the instruction. And that can be really helpful for them to have success in following those instructions through. The other thing that we can do is to create a predictable routine. And again, this means that the child doesn't have to hold too much information in their mind at any one time, because once we've got that predictability, they don't really need to think about what's happening. So that might just be having a really, really predictable routine, particularly at home in the mornings or at bedtime. Um, and it might be actually having a visual timetable that tells them what those different steps are so that they don't have to hold that information in their mind. We can also use visual supports. So if we're giving an instruction or we're trying to give them information, showing them as well as telling them can be really, really helpful. But it's also really helpful to be able to give them some sort of visual cue to remind them what they're going to be doing so that they don't have to hold information in their mind. They have something concrete to look at that will remind them. We can also use things like visual or written checklists for routine activities. And this is something that I did with my son at home. Um, he was really, really bad in the mornings when we were getting ready for school. And even after two or three years of going to school, he just didn't get organised in the morning. And I spent all my mornings nagging at him to get organised. So we did a written checklist, which he made himself which had all of the key activities that he did in the morning. So rather than me nagging at him and telling him every step and going on and on and on, he was able to go to his checklist and remind himself what the next step was. And it made our morning so much more smooth and there was a lot less nagging and shouting. The other thing that we can do for children who are not so great with changes or moving from one activity to another is to use visual or auditory cues for change. So I've seen some wonderful practice in classrooms where teachers use a certain piece of music that tells the child that they're going to be moving on from one activity to the next or particular actions or it might just be a five minute warning or a timer to let them know that they're going to be moving on to another activity. We can also use running commentaries for problem solving to help support understanding. So sometimes our children need a little bit of extra help to work out how we go about solving a problem. And it might be that if we do a running commentary and tell them the steps that we're taking whilst we're solving a problem, that can help them to think about what they're doing. And we can do that when we're working alongside them as well and give a little bit of a narration of what they're doing to help them to think about the steps that they're taking. Another thing that we can use is specific problem solving scripts. So these are um, scripts that come in a very set format that um, we can use in certain situations that allows the child to be able to kind of internalise those scripts so that they can use them themselves in future. Another thing that can be really helpful for our children, and we're very lucky in Highlands to be able to have access to technology like the Chromebooks. So we can use that to help children to organise themselves and particularly for older children, being able to use Google Classroom and the calendars and, and reminders within that can be really helpful for them to be able to organise themselves and make sure that they get their work done on time. 
These are just a few examples of different ways that you can use visual supports to support children. So as you can see, these are examples that we might use for children at school. So on the left hand side of the screen, we've got a visual timetable that you might see in a classroom that's got all of the different activities that the child might do throughout the course of the day and gives them an idea of what time those things might be happening at. And that can really help them to know what's happening and when it's going to happen. As children get a little bit older, they might find it useful to have a colour coded timetable for school because it can be difficult to pick out the key information from a busy timetable that's got information about lots of different classes across the whole week. So it helps them to be able to pick out the information that's important for them. And as they get older, it can also be really useful to use technology either on their phones or on the Chromebooks to be able to help them to organise themselves, to know what their timetable is, but also for tracking things like homework. So now we have an opportunity to reflect on what we've learned so far in terms of cognitive development. Is there anything that um, you've learned today in terms of executive function that makes you think that maybe the child that you work with or your own child might have a difficulty with, with an area of executive function? So they might have a difficulty with working memory, or it might be that they have poor impulse control, or it might be that they have difficulty with that mental flexibility of being able to shift from one thing to another. So now's a good opportunity to have another look at the wheel tool and um, to have a think about what you're seeing in terms of the, the child that you're, you're working with or that you, you have at home um, and to think about how that might map on to the cognitive development part of the, the wheel. What might it mean in terms of executive function? Um, what behaviours are you seeing and what does that mean in terms of executive function? Um, and then from there, you've got an opportunity to kind of think about a plan. So what what strategies that we've spoken about might be useful for, for that child. I hope you find this information about executive function useful. If you would like to find out a little bit more about executive function, there's a fantastic website from the Centre on the Developing Child at Harvard University. They have loads of really good handouts on executive function, but also some really great information about other topics as well.